Hola, hola, bienvenidas, bienvenidos. Hello, welcome everyone to the third cinema in gender and gender perspective forum organized by the Mar del Plata International Film Festival. It is a true pleasure to be meeting today. Without a doubt, this is a very different festival. It is a different world, actually. And this is a festival of resistance. And in a way, we had to adapt to the circumstances. This festival has undergone many changes in terms of the proposals that are usually part of it, also for the forum. But it was an essential thing for us to provide continuity for this forum that we created in 2018 within the framework of the Mar del Plata International Film Festival. We hope that under normal circumstances, a forum will uh, have uh, the uh, usual elements. Apart from this meeting, the general programming of the festival is defined and has been uh, with the focus on gender perspective. We celebrate this third forum for cinema and gender perspective, and we include the agenda of gender with association with the issues of the agenda of cinema. Within the framework of an international event, we have the ability to uh, make visible the different problems in a different way. And that's the focus of our forum. We want to have a space where we can discuss these issues, where we can visualize them, and also in a very specific way, try to institutionalize the responses. In this way, we can further explore gender perspective, the way in which film is made, the way, the way in which film is programmed, and also how we write and think about cinema. We also are celebrating, which is a great source of joy, which is that we have more than 500 people who are interested in participating, coming from different parts of the world. We have people from Bolivia, Brazil, Chile, Colombia, Spain, France, Italy, Mexico, Paraguay, Peru, Portugal, United Kingdom, Uruguay, United States, and every province in Argentina, every corner of our country. Undoubtedly, this reflects the cross-cutting nature of this topic, meaning that in every country we see and observe gender inequalities. Unfortunately, this exists, so that's why we are here. We would also like to thank you for the time each one of you, each one of the participants has taken to answer the uh, sign-up form where uh, there were many issues mentioned, for example, acquiring tools to deal with and deconstruct inequalities. Also continuing to think of the role of women in a collective manner, as well as dissidents in the audiovisual sector. We are here because we believe that equality is built also through education, through information, and through knowledge by identifying other ways of transforming and other proposals within the agenda of feminism. So we do understand that this forum, this meeting, is merely an exchange but the idea that we have is to enrich the process and to really have even more concerns more uh, questions that we will ask ourselves after we conclude the forum this is a worldwide movement it has to do with the mobilization and the drive of feminist feminist women the lgbtq plus community and the conquest for more rights. It is very important to continue acquiring rights, including the sovereignty over our own bodies and feel accompanied, supported, and know that in this struggle for equality, we are all together. We will. We should also bear in mind that a festival of this nature, like the Mar del Plata Film Festival, the only class A region in our, uh, in our continent, has to be positioned from a feminist perspective and a feminist paradigm. And this involves an active attitude to transform reality from small gestures to major actions. And it is our responsibility to do it from that point of view, seeking rights, uh, the equality of rights, equity, sorority, and inclusion. I would like to finally uh, let you know that we will be recording this forum and then it will be uploaded to our YouTube channel. So if you were not able to participate, you will be able to do so later on. I would like to thank those who have worked 
to make this forum possible. Analia Barrio Nuevo, Michelle Chax Toriglia, Lydia Stevens, Diana Bersi, Lorena Damonte, Ana Schmuckler, Leticia Bobioni, Macarena, Hernando Arena, Santiago Ligier, Tatiana Fernandez, Tomás Larraburu, the interpreters uh, of sign language and Spanish, and also the English and, and Spanish interpreters, and also the speakers, Maria Alche, Julia Kratke, Florencia Mamani, Ana Maria Muchnik, and Beatriz Navas Valdez, who will be joining us today. And also those of you who are here, without you, if we were not all together today, this forum would not be possible. So thank you very much. And now I will officially give the floor to Analia Barrio Nuevo. She is a professor in psychology and she has graduated from the National University of Córdoba. She's the coordinator of the Central Policy Unit of uh, for Gender of the UNC. She's a commissioner at the Provisional Commission for Memory. She specializes in clinical psychology and focuses on a gender perspective. Welcome, Analia. Thank you very much. Good morning to everyone. I have uh, today the role of being the moderator of this forum and I will be now explaining how we will be working today. During this first part we will be sharing what our uh, colleagues will be sharing what our speakers will be sharing in order to continue thinking about new topics. Maybe we will think of questions. So uh, we will be writing all of our questions and concerns on the chat. We will be paying attention, like I said, to the chat for any questions or concerns that may arise. For this first part, our microphones will be muted. It's so many people who are participating so that the microphones will be muted during this first part. This first part are the lectures, the interventions. And I suggest we communicate through the chat because that's, I believe, the most uh, organized way to go about things. Uh, so we will be uh, sharing uh, the uh, information this way. Then we will take a break. During the break, where each one will make some mate, some coffee, use the restroom, etc., we will also go fetch our green handkerchief. Because then when we return from uh, the break, we will be exchanging questions. And so we suggest that when there is a comment or question specifically for one of the speakers, I suggest you write that name so that you can um, uh, target your question and then we will do like a, a show of the green bandanas we will open our microphones we can sing and we can display our green bandanas so that we support the process from this image and we send a message saying that we are very happy to finally have the executive see the executive power sending uh, the bill to the lower house and very possibly before the end of the year actually pass this law. We will try not to go too fast because as you can see, we have uh, interpreters today. I will be naming them. We have English Spanish interpreters, Barbara Baix, Catalina Saraceno and Paulina Casabe. And then we have a team of uh, sign language interpreters. Federico Sykes is the advisor. Uh, and then sign language interpreters. We have Patricia Miguez, Daniela Kaplan, and Victoria Perales. We would like to thank them very much for their participation. We believe it is a good gesture because it is a human right to have accessible communication. So I would like to thank you, uh, thank the festival for this invitation. And I believe that this will be an excellent discussion. I will be naming the speakers of so those of you who will speak. Ana Maria Muchnik. Ana Maria, you can open your microphone if you want. Then we will hear from Maria Alche, Julia Kratje, Florencia Mamani, and finally Beatriz Navas Valdez. I will be introducing Ana Maria. She is a journalist, a host, and a producer. 
she began her professional career in 1963 on TV with uh, very symbolic programs for women and children as a host for uh, channels 13 and 9 at Radio Belgrano. She was the host of Ciudadanas between 1984 and 1989. In Moscow, she participated as a rapporteur for the media in the World Congress on Women organized by FEDIM. In Beijing, she participated in the fourth World Conference on Women organized by the United Nations. She studied drama in Paris and she also organized a seminar on the media by uh, organized by UNESCO. She was a producer in theater and TV and she was the head of press and public relations of the Random House Group in South America. She is part of La Mujer y el Cine since the first year of its foundation and she is now the director of the festival and president of the association La Mujer y el Cine, Women and Cinema. Ana Maria, you have uh, the floor. You can activate your microphone. Estamos bien? Are we okay? Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Good morning to all of those who are joining us today. It is honestly a really, a real thrill to be here. And before I start talking about my presentation per se, I would like to uh, thank Cecilia and Juan Lima and everybody who worked behind this festival. I can assure you that their soul was in every step, and uh, I felt that every Let's begin by saying that La Mujer y el Cine, Women and Cinema, was born in 1978 as a result of the initiative of a group of women in culture, where Susana López Merino from Mar del Plata uh, invited them to participate, including Maria Luisa Bemberg, and uh, it's good to name her right now because uh, there will be a book published by the festival as a tribute to her because of the 25th anniversary of her passing and we will be seeing some of her films. Maria Luisa Marta Bianchi, Sara Paso, Gabriela Masu, Beatriz Dijarra Wells and uh, others, all women that worked on cinema came together to do something which at that time in our country was completely unprecedented. There were some instances in other countries of the world, for example, in France, in uh, Crete, and there was there were attempts. I'm talking about that year 78 to uh, try to gather women uh, who worked on cinema. The idea at the time was to support, was to disseminate films made by women. I must bear in mind that at the time there was practically no film directors who were women in our country, only Maria Luisa as a fiction uh, director and Clara Sapetini as a documentary filmmaker. And there were some uh, previous cases of silent film directors who were women, very few, and whose films can be seen on the Cinematheque, but not many of them. So this was a bit the scenario when we we started with this project and we started working and we started working because uh, I really I didn't start at the beginning, but one year after I became part of this festival. and the idea was just was not just to disseminate and support the work of the different women, but also, and this was, these were the words of Maria Luisa, and Cecilia remembered these words when Maria Luisa used to say that we had to kill the dragon. The idea was that we have to kill the dragon 
in the sense that women had to film, had to make films if they had the possibility, they had to have the courage to do so. And at all times, we were of the idea that by disseminating these films and showing them and watching them and talking to people about them and telling people to come see these films, we believe this was a very good way to really begin this uh, festival. We have already completed 32 years. There were many difficulties. Not everything was uh, good down this road. And at some point, we were uh, part, of course, of the Mar del Plata Film Festival. At some point, we were not part of the festival because uh, no of, a women's bien. film festival was eh, not considered relevant within the context of the festival. The issue of abortion Porque also divided the waters because some of the sponsors, some of the private sponsors that were part of us, a part of the festival for so many years, took a step back because they did not agree. So there were many backs and forths, but we always continued pushing forward because that's what women do. We continue moving forward. So I believe it is very important for us to have our horizon very clear. And our horizon is to disseminate and to show every woman that they can do it and to show their work. The film schools that opened and the return of democracy to our countries and the women's movements and the world women's movements have made the festival grow and grow and uh, women have really uh, been able to show the films that they make more and more and to prove that they are important and they, they deserve to be screened. The results are obvious. Maybe we would want, instead of 30% versus 70% men, maybe instead of 30, 70, maybe we would like to have more. We would like to see this number grow. I am an optimist. I believe that we are growing little by little. We believe that we have come a long way. We have fought and struggled. We have gained our space in the streets. We have done our work well with much effort, much intelligence, and also a lot of courage. This is worthy of admiration, of course, not only because it is good for everyone, but also because young people, the young girls, have really taken over and they realize that this is a way forward. So I would like to say something that was very touching and which happened not too long ago when my eldest grandson graduated at the Nacional Buenos Aires School. The day of the graduation, they covered the entire stage where all my family members, all the family members were there and the teachers as well. The 13 girls got on stage and with their green scarves, they were able to say and denounce and show on a, with a microphone to expose the reality that they had suffered. It wasn't rape, but they suffered a lot of assault, a lot of mistreatment. There were many teachers that uh, had a very bad behavior with the girls throughout their studies. And they were very, very young, so they were extremely brave. This took many people by surprise. Another of the things that I believe is very important and that I should mention, it's the fact that we have a course on short films every year. And last year, we received 168 films, 168 short films made by women from every corner of our country. So this has happened of the festival. Many of these 
que asisten a festivales internacionales, and are part que of estrenan sus películas, festivals. que han hecho más de una o dos. Esto nos ayudamos y so nos ponemos orgullosas. Estamos really muy proud of them, de proud of this. Y and, creemos, uh, sin lugar a dudas, que esto tiene que ser. Without a doubt, Muchas veces nos preguntan, ¿ustedes creen que en este momento que las mujeres realmente están cada vez really, más posiciones uh, are más posiciones, ¿es realmente necesario tener un festival? Y creo que por muchos um, I think that for many years, we believe that doing festivals and organizing competitions and uh, getting in touch with festivals abroad or getting in touch with the provinces, we believe is still necessary and very important, mostly because we want to uh, increase that percentage. We do not want 30, 70 anymore. We're struggling for 50, 50. And, uh, we said this before, and, and Cecilia probably remembers this, and probably many of the ones who are watching today. Remember 5050 for 2020. Remember 2020 is now. It's the present. It's this year. Unfortunately, because of a reality that exceeds us completely, and uh, it was like a tsunami. In the COVID pandemic, we've had to postpone many decisions, but we've always had the decision to move forward. This festival is virtual, and our festival will also be virtual in March, and we will continue receiving short films and feature films. But above all, what I would like to say, because I truly believe in this, and uh, because I admire all the women who from associations, groups, uh, from collectives, and from everything that has to do with getting together in solidarity to fight for our rights for every woman in this position, for every woman who has struggled and who defend diversity and go out in the street and are not ashamed to denounce and to speak out, to no all of them, not just no to the ones who make films, not just to the ones who are behind the camera directing, but also to technicians, to actresses, to everyone who writes scripts, who, uh, edit the films, those women who can now speak out, who can show their green scarves, who can say, today we are starting a movement which has uh, placed our gaze on, uh, placed the gaze of everyone on ourselves and from us to them. So everything you've done is admirable. Everything we've done is admirable. We will continue doing this. We will continue organizing a women's film festival. And of course, we welcome everyone. Women will continue to go out in the streets. The young girls will have their place because we will give it to them. And also because in a way, this is the way forward, and we know this is the way forward. So, to everyone, this is my perspective, this is my opinion, this is my word, and my word is for support and to motivate you, to encourage you to continue moving forward, because I truly believe that that 50-50 will arrive soon. You have the floor. Thank you. Thank you, Ana Maria. You've had some comments in our chat uh, of gratitude you, that share certain anecdotes uh, that they remember you fondly. There's a lot of sorority towards you in the chat. And thanks to women just like you, it was possible to be, it is possible to get what we are because you led the way, you paved the way. So, we want more feminisms and more sorority. Thank you very much. Now we are going as uh, I want to remind you that you can make comments and questions through our chat box. We are reading it. Now, as we Maria T is preparing, I'm going to introduce her. She works and lives in Buenos Aires, Argentina. She studied 
filmmaking in the National and Experimentation Film School ENERC in the city of Buenos Aires. And then she conducted the film laboratory run by Martin Rechman and Andres Ditela at Torcuato de Tela University. She studies philosophy in the University of Buenos Aires and she directed the short films Quien se metió con Mayra, Noelia Gulliver Sing, Sing Signs of Struggle and Invierno 3025 and the feature film Familia Sumergida. She works as a screenwriter, teacher and director. Maria, the floor is yours. Hello, everyone. Thank you very much for the invitation to be part of the uh, festival forum to Lorena, Damonte, Cecilia, and Ali as well. I'm a bit in, uh, embarrassed to, to uh, put in words what I feel because I'm now academician, but uh, I'm was very pleased to listen to Ana Maria and to understand also the question of feminism, the genesis of struggles, what she spoke about the 80s, those women who got organized as pioneers to put together an association and how history evolves and that possible feminisms, the confluences of the different in differences and connections those collective struggles that interweave. Now we have the green scarf because we have the mother's scarves. There's a history of our country of a tremendous courage. And throughout the years where we marched and we saw the young women participate and the uh, women who um, fought for the legislation of abortion, we saw that confluence of women. It was a great empowering movement. It's also very strange, very weird, the context that we are undergoing, this virtual uh, setting where we cannot embody this encounter. And this pandemic is highlighting the inequalities at the injustices uh, in companies, for example, that become richer and at the same time, there are a lot of bodies that suffer the, the precarious working conditions, the hostile setting where injustices become quite relevant. So it's a call to um, think of the symbolic and culture and cinema are constructs of meaning. So the question is how we should take ownership of this perspective to exit this precarious world that has become so injustice. I would like to point out my thoughts in, turn, uh, in terms of uh, public policies. It is key to federalize cinema to encourage the that the, that culture reaches women of all classes that can reach all diversities that can reach different social classes territories so as to finally engrave this OTT and ensure the resources to bridge all those gaps. Because many times what we see through platforms are representations of the woman, of the representation of women that are not related or rather they uh, reinforce stereotypes or cliches at a very difficult in a very difficult year with a lot of femicides. So it is important to think how to represent the uh, body of women, how to tell stories and quit stereotypes. And for that, we need the diversity of voices, diversity of people who are able to narrate 
to be able to see more. When you see a, a film from the province of Corrientes, for example, you are grateful for that difference, for those nuances. So it is important to make a lot of effort to make cinema accessible for all, more inclusive. Argentina has been built on very European ideas, a white Argentina. I have been lately been working on a documentary film and been uh, giving a lot of thought to these themes. So I wanted to share these with you and I was able to embody them and that I think it was very important to share the idea that many images of culture, many symbolic images have been built on the basis of the European wide world. And there are many different types of images we have to rewrite in a society that has been rationalized and that has been quite racist. How to find that, how to foster a debate so that other Buddies, I'm a bit distracted because I'm reading the chat box at the same time. How other stories that have been silenced through history and due to our culture can be given their own place. So I think it's very important and that's the way I think about it. Film schools should have a perspective, not only in terms of studying the technical aspects of how to make a movie, how to make a film, but to work on the training of students. We should be trained with a higher focus on history, on getting to know our own culture, philosophies, the literature, to think of all the different aspects, to think and to realize how all these inequalities have been built throughout the year and the type of cinema we should make so that society becomes more open-minded. What are the things we can do to uh, make our contributions. As to the narrative structures, the patriarchal, hegemonical narrative submits us to a logic of thinking of conflicts with co-flung conflicts of um, force one and force two, and a word that the Western culture has always thought in a dichotomical or bi a bilater um, bi binary uh, manner. Um, so the question in terms of narrative is how to abandon that binary structure and to be able to think a different logic, to think of the structure of stories and also to think as well from a gender perspective where you can abandon those categories and to think of humanity in a more open manner and in terms of history structure, what would be a gender perspective to think about them? I think there could be a million different, and that is the challenge, not to have just one, but to, in all the possible varieties of history, the question is to understand what lies uphold uh, the world that keeps going and uh, to think of that matrix that upholds this unfair world, how to think from that, those perspectives to shed light on more ambivalent areas and more rich areas from the cinema, we can develop a society that is more to our liking. And in terms of topics, we can invent a world that is different from the one we perhaps experience or we live that we do not like. That on the one hand and on the other, I wanted to say one last thing in terms of uh, shooting and uh, care structures. I remember when I started uh, studying filmmaking and I started shooting and there 
voice and their uh, stories and to be able to uh, tell their own male stories and it was much more accepted in uh, the shootings and i have the memory of um women that were more difficult to uh, put their stories uh, in those shootings and it was more difficult to tell those stories to narrate those feminine stories those type of thoughts that were difficult somehow to convey so how to generate in the technical crews not only equalities in terms of parity but also to allow a diff that different stories have also their place and that can be also narrated and motherhood is not something imposed or necessary but there are many different uh, technicians and filmmakers that can choose to be mothers and that generates a gap when it comes to shooting that are very intense moments and with the uh, caretaking activities uh, it becomes really hard. So you see a woman director that shoots a film and then they cannot continue. And because once they have children, it's more difficult to shoot. When I shot my movie, I say it as an exception, the um, DP had five um, children. She was a single mother and she brought it to our, the shooting. It was a quite exceptional situation, but it would be good that any uh, cinematographer can have that possibility of of having children and to have somehow of um, taking care of one's children and at the same time shoot so at the, for example universities we had nursery schools uh, so that no uh, woman is limited and to avail, to enable that possibility to uh, men as well because uh, the if uh, the father could take the their his children to the workplace uh well it would be fair for them as well so i think it's a dimension we should take care into um to take into account so that uh, the world of cinema is more equal that's it for now thank you thank you Thank you very much for your contribution. And it's uh, what a situation of joy is when you can become a valid um, spokesperson for uh, the rights of those who have can haven't been heard. As Julia gets ready. Uh, I want to tell you that we continue reading your comments. It's very interesting what you have been saying with reference to different topics, with uh, training schools, the possibility of federalizing to have uh, anti-colonialist perspective in, uh, with a transsectional or cross-cultural outlook. Now we are going to present Julia Kratje. She has a PhD in social sciences from the University of Buenos Aires. Her research on Latin American cinema funded by the CONICET. Uh, she is um, part of the Institute of Gender Research Studies of the a philosophy uh, faculty uh, in the Buenos Aires University. She is the author of Al Margen del Tiempo, Deseos, Ritmos y Atmosferas in, in El Cine Argentino. And she's a compiler of Espejos Oblicos, five outlooks on feminism on, on contemporary cinema since 2019, she has been uh, collaborating with the site directed by Roger Cosa, and uh, she is editing a collective piece um, on the film, on the cinema of Lucrecia Martel. She presides the 
Argentine Association on Cinema and Audiovisual Arts. Julia, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Analia. As my fellow panelists said, it's very moving to be part of this forum. I thank the festival and especially Cecilia Barrenueva and Analia for in my, inviting me to be part of this third edition. I am really grateful and I have great admiration for those who lead this forum. I'm going to read a text that I have prepared especially. Uh, we miss the sea murmur. However, we are happily here and we are able to listen to one another. What should be the relationship between feminism and cinema? It's a question that we posed in the 80s by Anette Kuhn, who takes our look to a problem an unavoidable take. The imperatives that cross-cut cinema and feminism and the relationship between cinema and feminism. What are those relations about? Should it take a pre-configure idea? Those are complex questions and there are no easy answers. It depends on the different circumstances. I would like to share my reflections on criticism, film criticism, understood as an intervention, key intervention in the symbolic world that builds and transforms representations, social sexual disputes, forms of perceiving the world and also conceiving cinema, feminism, history, and the word and the voice itself. Criticism is one of the film field that has a great inequ gender inequalities. In the past, as in the present, criticism is a traditionally, it's an art that has been uh, led by the, by male. It's uh, the box of resonance for the build of, uh, for the development of agendas, the, va the value on the aesthetic fields from the construction of feminism. There are several waves of feminism and those waves that uh, broke on and this hypnotic novel by Virginia Woolf is a renewal. To, for starters, it is important to rebuild a genealogy that focuses on a generous arc of critics and writers who throughout the 20th century led the way um, by signing with a nickname or initials in specialized journals such as Victoria Ocampo, Maveriskovic, Moira Soto in Argentina, among many others, with other pioneer women. When we unveil this history, we can see the opening to voices and outlooks, but when feminisms um, were surfing those tides, it was very limited and it was quite exceptional. And there was a restricted idea of criticism submitted to certain patterns of interpretation. Without submitting to anyone, we can embrace the legacy of Siegfried Fakawar and others but Maya Derens and Susan Sontag. The adventure of criticism does not belong to ones or the others, but to those who can expand their resonances and look cinema without um, a limited or narrow outlook. Because when we talk about feminist criticism, we also thought, talk about theoretical paradigms and audiovisual gaze in the 70s with the second wave of feminisms with a lot of local repercussion. We have to acknowledge the audacity of those who came before us with the studies of film and the outreach or the reach of criticism goes deeper and revolves or stirs the bottom of history. 
the union of women, the feminist Argentine feminism uh, founded by Victoria Ocampo with the participation later on of Maria Luisa Bernberg, Ila Reis, Gabriel Richter, Marta Migueles, Sarita Torres, Women and Cinema, the association led by Maria Strisan Bember, Lita Stantic, Sara Bascio, Beatriz Villalba Welch, Welch, Gabriela Mazú, Marta Bianchi, Clara Sapetini, Anna Maria Muznik, the multiple groups of artists, artists and filmmakers are projects that actually articulate critical thinking and political action. From the, just, can you please go a bit slowly? Yes, of course. I apologize. In the proliferation of open films, a narrative shapes which take away the sexist practice, we see how rigidity is being overcome without leaving apart differences and the poetic freedom of a critique that is being called upon by makers and the audience that is present there at the film room. As Clara Krieger, Marcela Visconti and Anna Breutmann, the invisible work, the anonymous work of women behind the scenes is also taken to the making rooms. This is our world, writes Virginia Woolf and lighted by growing stars. Green and purple waves show fans in the screen and leaving their here and there its presence. Critique by women and feminist critique are not the same, even though any critique might assume significance linked to gender and class. Therefore, saying critique implies problematizing the place of authors in terms of sexual and industrial division of the cinematography and filmmaking in general, even rescuing old female filmmakers or forgotten by official history. In those cases, more attention is given to direction. A few decades ago, it was important to vindicate alternative filmmaking today in a context where everything should be seen that any event deserves visibility or that visibilization is a goal and not a starting point that we should problematize a critique that could make uncomfortable the visibilization conditions not what can be seen but what lays outside our framework of vision would take us to question the premise that what's visible is an unavoidable destination, both for critique and cinema. From coast to coast, the waves are there for us and the scarves for the right to a free and legal and safe abortion show our voices and show how them move, as Virginia Woolf says, below the surface, chasing one another forever. And to finish now, making films implies also reflective on the poetic and political universes being recreated. Avoiding common places is a way to put into practice critic thinking to foster new readings from the academy to journalism when we cover the film biz and two papers. The feminist critique is trying to change the perspective and to leave away the consensuated formulas, a passionate distance and a wild way and a self-aware way to write shows and needs a critical and theoretical perspective, imagination and commitment to images, to texts and to the community making films a place to go while we were grouping ourselves without stopping to 
take those places that were denied to us before without stepping back and without naturalizing the rights that we were able to conquer. Feminist critique can increase the desire for films, for affection, and from strong and loving gazes with seeing these bubbles coming out from the bottom of the sea. Thank you very much. Thank you, Julia. Thank you for your comments and all the contributions that we see in the chat, theoretical comments, two very interesting comments. And now we are going to keep on reflecting in what you said, Julia, in terms of the importance of having critical thinking. Now we are going to go to Florencia Mamani. I am going to introduce her. She was born and raised in Becar San Isidro, province of Buenos Aires. She is a multimedia designer, web developer, PC technician, and she used to be a backpacker. She is a member of the collective Identidad Marrón, where together with other people of color, they debate and act towards structural racism that people of color and indigenous peoples in Latin America experience. In parallel, she has the project Cine Marrón, focusing in audiovisual hegemony. She currently works in two audiovisual essays, which are anti-racist. Flor, you have the floor. Hello, good afternoon. First of all, thank you very much for being here. And this morning, precisely, a friend of mine took a plane in Jujuy and I asked her how many people of color were there? Three, and Jujuy is one of the provinces with the highest number of people of color in Argentina. My mom is from Jujuy in the north of Argentina and I was born and raised next to Villa Campo, and I received a very formal education in Zona Norte, a northern area of the province of Buenos Aires. And while I kept on studying, my mom didn't know how to read and write until I was an adult. And this made me realize more and more what was happening next to me, going back to the plain story, only three people of color coming from Jujuy, when we know that this is a province with a lot of people that look like me. And maybe I started to realize this at the University of Buenos Aires. I went to the film university in Buenos Aires. And in one of the lessons of history too, when they were discussing the imaginariums in Argentine filmmaking, one of the professors asked what was one of the ideas, the imaginariums in Argentina. And to the way I am, I said, well, we all came from a ship. And I think that I was the only person with indigenous features, or at least we are very few at the filmmaking university. And that's how I started writing, but also reflecting on the way I look when, wherever I go. And in terms of filmmaking and cinema, I was lucky enough to shoot and I wanted to see what was going to happen. So I chose my entire crew. They were all female and my lead characters were people of color. And there's something about the stories that going back to what Maria said before, first of all, the federalization concept is very important. Secondly, stories should include a perspective not only a gender perspective, but also, and when I was trained, they teach me to be Argentinian and to forget my Indian roots. And in my case, there are like seven generations of my family on Argentine soil. So why isn't this taught 
in university, and I am talking about the UBA and the Argentine Film University, why don't they teach that we exist, that we are not savages like films taught us? Because I would say that two thirds of Argentine filmmaking, they were trying to represent or to portray people with my features. They are riding horses, they are savages, and some professors, both at UBA and FUC, both of them architects, said at the beginning of their courses, well, you won't be changing anyone's lives with what you do. You won't be killing anyone. But what happens, what would happen if a country, and especially Argentina, which is like the more European country in Latin America, what would happen if a country repeats a message over and over again? who's Argentinian or who can be Argentinian, because we could say that the gaucho can be portrayed as white, but what will happen with the indigenous peoples? They will have to be the villains in a film. If that message is portrayed all the time in films, on TV, and in the entire audiovisual industry, then this will end up damaging many people because I can be here speaking, but then I go to the pharmacy and they will look at me in a different way. They won't ask me how much I studied, if I am Quechua, Aymara, Wichi. They won't make that difference. That's why I believe that today we should start at universities. We should discuss because we are all the time saying, let's rethink this or that, but always considering the ideas of European people. But we should know that we are in this country and in this continent, in the southern cone, and if my classmates go out to the streets, they will see people like me, probably not in classrooms in universities. And this takes us back to the plain story. But it is necessary for universities to include a perspective of who were the inhabitants here and to stop talking about us as strangers. There are people, actors who are of color and they believe, well, if I'm an actor, now it's my time to be someone else, to be a shero, a superhero. But it's very hard for me to listen to actors to say, no, I won't go to that casting. I won't go to that ad, to that casting because um, they they want a a village phase. And if you look me up in LinkedIn, you will find many professionals with my surname, with my last name. Why? Because we are trying to put ourselves in places where we should not. I mean, my mom was a housekeeper, but my aunts were not. That's because the eldest sister ending up being a mother, that's her story. But I believe that This is something that should be included and discussed in universities. They should include this perspective. We cannot have a shooting with colleagues saying, wow, this culture, and it's not their fault, my colleagues' fault. It's the fault of the Argentinian education that teaches us that we do not exist. I can say I'm a film director and there are other women of color in Sao Paulo, in Bolivia, with my same, with the same last name as mine. But we are in this situation where we are pursuing our identity. And I believe that we have a specific way of communicating. We are portrayed in movies like those sad people that won't reveal, like what happened with Roma, Rome, the film. And we laugh, we do laugh, we have a way of communicating that sometimes works better than others. 
than other times. And it would be good for us to be allowed to tell our own stories. And going back to funds, it would be good also, because let me give you an example. There's a short by Mayra Nieva from Jujuy, now through the NERC Nova, in this festival now called Inisha. And in Jujuy, for example, there are many funds for productions being granted, and those production or productions do not match Jujuy's population. And I am referring to Jujuy as the most extreme case because I am from Buenos Aires and there are many people who look like me in Buenos Aires too. I believe that this is very important and I would like to thank you for this, for letting me tell you that it's not only me, even though at the FUC at the Film University in Argentina, it was only me looking like this. There are other people and I think that in Enetic Nova, a few years from now, we are going to be seeing what we call cinema run, cinema of color, because we, from our perspective, with our cultural baggage and experiences, we cannot be measured with the same European aesthetics. We have an Asian culture and not all of us know our origins because there are many immigrants and unfortunately many people do not know their origins or do not know their own stories or histories we know that we are around here but there is a lot of culture behind that the indian culture has a different conception of time of, uh, and space and if this could be applied to cinema because we talk about the less and other experts, but in the Indian culture, there's a lot of wealth, a lot of richness to be used, to be developed, to be included. And I think it's good to say that we can tell other stories with no stereotypes. Yes, my mom is a housekeeper, but she, of course, is in favor of legal abortion. But it could be, for example, my aunt, that was an accountant or my other aunt that was a factory worker and those those superheroes that are also migrant people and i think that it would be very good for us to avoid stereotypes and when we do the posters of films they shouldn't be left in the back there are people who devote their lives to to study, to become actors. And because of the way they look, they should play the roles of housekeepers for the entire life. That's unfair. So we should have the same right to be whatever we want to be. And once again, I would like to thank you for the time to speak here. And I think that it would be very good for us to be able to tell what we want to say with our own perspective. And I am the descendant of an indigenous leader. And I watched some productions that discussed that fact, uh, an indigenous rebellion in Jujuy, and they do not match the stories that I've heard because they are told from a white perspective to sum it up. So this is what we are demanding. Sometimes we are being demanded more because people don't get us or maybe because we are not following the European academic standards. It is necessary for you to know that we have our own terms, our own culture, our, all, our own perspective, and a very important Asian culture. I don't know if I have enough time to continue, but once again, I would like to thank you for the space, and I think that this is it for me. Thank you very much. Well, thank you very much, Flor. There are so many messages celebrating your participation in this space and highlighting how important it is to change the perspective in universities in their training and also 
the importance of the Indian cosmovision and how awful it is for stereotypes to reproduce over and over again. Well, very good. And now we are going to continue with our next colleague. We are going to introduce Beatriz Navas Valdez. She has a PhD in film analysis by the Universidad Complutense. She started cooperating with the Center La Casa Encendida, a center of contemporary culture from Madrid in 2003. And she was responsible for the audiovisual department from 2008 to 2014. Moreover, she was in charge of the music and arts from 2014 to 2017. In these areas, she coordinating the programming related to film, music, art, and video, betting for new formats, and reflecting on digital culture and the audiovisual media. At La Casa Encendida, she organized initiatives oriented to overcoming the gap in female represent representation in contemporary culture and in the audiovisual field. And she fostered projects like Princesses and Darth Vader's, serving from humor and the guerrilla culture to discuss feminisms, or She Makes Noise, a music and cinema festival dedicated to women who work in the fields of electronic music, sound art, and audiovisual experimentation, among others. In 2017, she started her collaboration as executive producer with Sayaka Productions, developing cinema and TV projects. She is the co-founder of the online platform, a free online platform for independent cinema called Plat TV, which specializes in Spanish experimental cinema and in Latin American cinema. She has also worked as a film critic. And in 2018, she published the book, Y Ahora Lo Importante, and now the important, Penguin Random House. Now, then, Bea, you have the floor. Thank you very much. Thank you, Analia. And um, also, maybe uh, to discuss what I do right now, I'm the general director of the CAS, which is the arts and audiovisual uh, studies. Um, it's the equivalent of the Inca here and also head of the Ibermedia program. I am delighted to be part of this forum. I am delighted to be hearing our, our colleagues and all of the participants. However, I believe that there's one thing that we should mention. And it's the fact that uh, Mar del Plata, together with other festivals of Class A, which have a woman, a woman as an artistic director, and I believe that is very, very important. Important to point that out and point that out that point out that Cecilia Barro Nuevo is the leader of these projects because I believe that this is the starting point of everything from uh, productions and museums. Uh, there are teams with many women, but usually at the very top, there's a man. And in this case, uh, it is a woman. So I think that is worthy of celebration. Thank you, Cecilia, and I, congratulations, because that spirit of resistance um, is reflected by the fact that the festival was organized despite the difficulties. So congratulations to you and your team. I think that more than theory, I will focus more on practical things. Uh, my PhD was in film analysis and I worked on theory for uh, many years and I'm a woman of action. So I think that culture and women's representations, well, I've uh, focused very strongly on uh, conducting initiatives. I think that apart from thinking, I think that we need to take steps into the future because we do face a 
major structural problem. So apart from analyzing and studying uh, these things, if we do not take measures of positive discrimination, then it will take longer. So uh, this is what uh, we've done um, in every environment that I've worked at. At La Casa Encendida, I, wor I worked with a group of uh, women and uh, we all had that moment, you know, that turning point where we woke up and we say, we never will go back. There's a film by John Carpenter, I believe in Latin America, it was called uh, Alive or Sobreviven. Well, it's this film where they all lived in a programmed world and the protagonist has a set of glasses which allow him to actually see the world as it is. So in a way, that's what happened to us. There was one day where we couldn't couldn't go back. There was no turning back and we saw all the structural problems. And when we started uh, seeing, I don't know, the programming in a museum or when you read the texts, we were seeing things very clearly after a certain point. So when I talk about moving into action, at the Center for Contemporary Culture, we started counting, counting how many exhibits uh, there were made by women, how many films made by women. We started counting and we started compensating and balancing that inequality. And all of these problems, uh, all of these things had its problems because we found people who were opposed, even women were opposed. No, I don't want to be part of something. Uh, and uh, I mean, problems of, you know, who wanted to participate and who didn't. But we kept moving forward. Obviously, we'd made mistakes and that's part of doing things. Yes, you, you, you some things will get broken, but you need to keep moving forward. I continued organizing events for women. We had a festival for electronic music and there used to be only men before. So that's why we created our uh, series, She Makes Noise, to invite women who did electronic music. And in Latin America, I think you're ahead of Spain. Uh, and ahead of Europe in general in terms of uh, humor because we combined audiovisual arts and uh, and feminism just to speak about feminism from a humorous perspective and we were doing different audiovisual programming uh, based on a women's perspective and we had really interesting response from the young audience and that's what we were most interested in. For one reason or the other, we were, I was called to run the uh, Cinema Institute and the person who called me actually told me that uh, she wanted to include that different perspective that I could bring in. So for these uh, past years, we have implemented measures to be able to really move forward more quickly and really try to bridge that gender gap. And this can be dealt with uh, from different perspectives, I believe. The fastest one is to use the budget and the funds and channel them towards more women. Since 2009, we started uh, to provide funds for films directed by women or produced by women. And from there to 2015, we also gave points for those projects that had more than 40% of women in uh, leading positions of the technical teams. And this year, we've taken other steps forward. Because it was the same if these positions were co as co-directors or, um, I mean, obviously there were certain tricks uh to obtain more points but now these points are given out only if it's the director or the executive producer as a woman and like i said leadership positions in technical teams in the case of a script it's different because we all know that it is a shared work 
And this year we've also included other things, which might be a bit controversial, but is to really define a gender quota. So at least 35% of the budget will go towards projects directed by women. The idea is to reach the year 2025 with 50%, 50, 50. So 50, 50 for 2020, we've moved on to 2025. That's why the goal was originally 2020, but things haven't changed that much over these past few years. So this 35%, both for short films and feature films in the budget, not in projects, yes, because there is a difference between those two things. And also, in Spain, we have a regulatory framework of European uh, nature, and then from that European framework, we adapt to the regulations of each country. So for audiovisual productions, we have a limit. We have a ceiling for the contributions that can be made to the different projects. So it can be more than 50% of the budget, except for what is called, referred to as difficult works. So for difficult works in Europe are, are considered those works by new directors, uh, the ones that are just starting and also in the case of short films and also for uh, co-productions within Europe. Those are the only exceptions. However, this year, when we see the severe differences in women's representations in different countries, we can name what is considered difficult works in our country. And those directed by women are considered difficult works and therefore need more funds. So we can have up to 75% of the budget in uh, funds to support these works. So we believe that this is also a major step forward. So upon seeing the results of this year, I believe it is very positive to see the, that we haven't had to reach out to that 35%. So with the points already, we reached 35% of projects directed by women. But like I said before, it's not 35% of the projects, but 35% of the budget, because there is a big difference between budgets for films directed by men and films directed by women. There are more projects uh, for documentaries directed by women in general, because they are cheaper. And we didn't want to uh, sort of get into that situation and we, solved the problem to define as a percentage of the budget and not of the projects. Those are the steps forward that we took. And of course, um, the commissions are equal, both for the national award and the different commissions uh, to provide the aid. I think Spain had a famous case when in 2011 they had to cancel the commission for the cinematography award because there was no parity in the jury. So this was um, something that was very present. This year we have started with a project called Impulsa and we do this in collaboration with the Women's Filmmakers Association and also with Netflix. And this is a contribution that we make in order to support uh, the production uh, of uh, written by women. Isn't that uh, so this is given for script writers and senior uh, directors. We believe this is very interesting to establish these collaboration systems. We believe that the maturity of a society is reflected by the fact that there is professional associations that are consolidated and to have women in these environments is essential and collaborating with these associations is important, but also to include the private sector. I think that it's very important to have them involved in the different entities that we um, have these are this is a fundamental step forward i think so within the ministry of culture we created the observatory of women 
we conducted studies there and sort of measured how things were going there and seeing how these structures work. In the last study, we realized that within the administrations themselves, there is a strong representation of men versus women. So it's very important in order to perform the changes that are necessary. It's very important to have women represented where decisions are made with respect to women. I think it's also very important to never let down our guard because we need to make everyone aware every time we can. If there's a festival, if there's a round table and there's no women in that round table, say it, you know, say it out loud because we can you know, or just offer them help. Maybe we can help you find someone find a woman to be included in these issues. I think it's very important to engage in dialogue with the different associations. I also like to hear from other associations in the world of culture, not just audiovisual ones, because we can learn from one another and we can have different perspectives. And uh, the, the visual arts, the circus, uh, all sorts of uh, arts, art forms in the spectrum and see what references we can have. So in that sense, moving into action is very important because even if we elaborate different theories, it is very important uh, to have other references. Uh, listening to Florencia was very interesting. I think that references are everything. We will have more women filmmakers if we have more women making films and there will be, you know, the more women we have, the more representation there will be. So it's very important to have women behind the cameras and also trying to analyze what is happening in the scripts, you know, when the scripts are written by women. So in that sense, we must realize the roles and the stereotypes so that we have that behind and in front of the camera. Before I was mentioning the importance of having women leading festivals. In Mar del Plata, we have a woman. In the Italian festival, we also have a woman. And the directors of the different institutes and in European cinema, we used to get together to talk about the gender gap and it was interesting that in Estonia, they mentioned they did not have that problem. It wasn't so uh, relevant as in the rest of Europe. One of the reasons is that they have policies that focus on uh, reconciliation. So policies always have to focus on this. Because as we said before, not all women have to be mothers, but if a woman is a mother, they can also find, they should also be able to find a way to balance those two aspects of their lives as well as for men. So reconciliation is an essential step in our path and a country like Estonia, which is a small country in the north of Europe, but having a woman running a festival will set the way to have more women and also the idea of having cross-cutting policies as well for the entire country. I believe there's also a great deal of responsibility for our sector and also when we do something in a sector it is also seen from other sectors as an example so it's very important to do that. This is uh, basically what I wanted to share and uh, to, to share the type of work that we're doing. We, of course, have a lot of uh, hard work ahead of us. And this is uh, for the people who will come after us, but also we use the example of people who came before us. Isabel Goichet uh, received uh, an award by a director who is more than 80 years old. And she said that, in her opinion, it was important to see the works of Isabel Goichet. So the she was recognizing the work of a director that came after her, not just before her. 
So to see those who are resisting is, is something that's very important. This is all. And thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, and I'm very excited to see how this forum uh, continues. And I really see more than 230 people who have joined. And this is uh, very, very important. Thank you very much. Hola, vamos a ir regresando de nuevo. We will get back to this forum. We will wait for one more minute, two more minutes for the rest to join us. And in the meantime, otro espacio ya más como con preguntas y algunas impresiones a Analia va a ser. We'll open now the floor to questions and answers. Uh, Analia will be the moderator of this forum, but I wanted to take this opportunity to say that all the comments that you have been sharing have been very moving to listen to Bea, Maria, Julia, Flor has also been very moving. It exchanged this sense of community that we are all together, that we can make it, that we will continue building more spaces for the equality. And to develop this forum in this surprising way, in this online setting, has also allowed us to get together from different parts of Argentina, from different parts of the world, and I want to celebrate that. I would like to thank all the different teams, festival teams of the Mar del Plata International Film Festival. Um, not only those who have been working hard for this forum to be possible, but all the teams of the festival that has uh, that uh, makes it possible to work from a gender perspective. I want to particularly thank the president of the festival, Fernando Juan Lima, with whom we have been working for quite some time now, ever since he was the vice president of the National Film Institute, to work with the gender perspective in the festival. I would like to say that we are going to send via email the agenda of participants so that you can uh, make the most of the exchange and we will shortly upload this forum to our youtube channels having said that i'll give the floor to analia and we continue with the exchange thank you so much thank you thank you very much cecilia i'm going to begin now by going quickly through the different issues you have been sharing through the chat. And I'm going to ask Ana Maria to prepare, um, to get ready because some questions are addressed to her. More cinema from the provinces also, that's what we want. The um, outlook, the porteño centric or the perspective from the uh, city of Buenos Aires is something that has to change. The good thing about this is that we could join from different areas of Argentina. Thank you for um, thank you for proposing this from the uh, gender forum for the different parts of the Argentina. We have many women in the international competition this year. Ana Maria. Beatriz is a clear of the of women and di in directive positions. It is not only important to uh, have those positions taken by women, but gender. Muchas gracias a todas las expositoras, right dice Chris. Thank you for all the panelists. Organization for proposing a diversity of voices. Thank you for to all our uh, to all the uh, Inca workers. Thank you for dialogue. Thank you for the encouragement of dialogue uh, for filmmakers, um, film critics, etc. For Ana Maria, we have also, we love you, we support you, we are with you. Thank you, Ana Maria, for your work. 
Maria Virginia says to be aware as a member of the audiovisual community of our responsibility of the cult in the cultural discourse. Ricardo says an anecdote. I remember I traveled from Rosario uh, by the end of the 80s to the festival Women and Cinema and from 1996 the 12th edition of the Mar del Plata Film Festival, we had a, we used to have a section uh, led by Marta Bianchi. I remember she was leading this section and Luciana said, yes, it's interesting this question of um, questioning what to tell. One thing is the technical aspect and the other thing is what to tell, what to narrate. But there is a, a place where both things intertwine because in the same way you make a film you have to focus on what you want to narrate the way of making has to be feminist as well as issues what do you think about that Ana Maria please the floor is yours if you would like to comment on that Ana Maria her microphone is muted ready Yes. Eh, okay. Algunas cosas. Eh, a couple of things. A lo que hace referencia uno de los mensajes. One of the messages makes reference principio. to something eh, I mentioned at the beginning. Años For several years, we carried out the festival of parte, women and cinema as part, as one of the sections de within the Mar del Plata Film Festival. Años, There were several eh, years we filled cinemas every day, we were able to bring a lot of movies directed by uh, women filmmakers from abroad and Argentina as well, and it was a series that was very successful, it lasted for many, many years. If there was somebody who came especially from Rosario, well, that's great. But unfortunately, there were people who did not think it was good to continue having this section um, sometimes uh, institute directors of festival directors because they considered that uh, festival of, uh, or a section of cinema made by women was no, not good. No, no, there was no room for that. Y de la noche a la mañana, and overnight, la sección, we, que, that decía, section disappeared. It was a very successful section, and we filled theaters. The uh, women directors came, there was an exchange between director, uh, women directors and audiences, and it was a great loss and a great source of sadness to finish with that, because to be within the Madalata Film Festival was different from doing it on our own. So we came back to Buenos Aires and we continue hosting it. The other thing I wanted to tell Beatriz, Beatriz from um, Women and the Cinema, we did a cooperation agreement with Cinema, with Cinema, with Cristina Andreu, who came here of Solidarity Cooperation. And this year we're going to have a short film um, competition and we were going to take the award winners to Spain and invite the women filmmakers. We had to call it off for reasons everybody is aware of, but we are working very hard with Virginia Andreu uh, on this. And she is uh, somebody who has spoken a lot about you, Beatriz, uh, who just like you leads this question of being able to La de coordinate the way in which todo el país, films made by women can reach every corner of the country and eh, has a había? situation of eh, uh, visualization. And the challenge of feminist claro, way of, saying, of making eh, yo lo films. Que creo es que, eh, what I las think is cada that things más are brought in every day more, and women filmmakers uh, shoot everything. Cecilia, you must remember that in one of the forums, Esther Diaz closed one of the talks by saying, film everything, you have to shoot everything, shoot a dog. Me dio mucha conmoción que ella diga eso. It was very porque, moving to hear eh, that. Eh, los hombres dicen, ¿y qué filman las mujeres? Filman las mujeres. Las mujeres las cosas que pasan las mujeres. Should, they, sí, they, they about las mujeres women. filmamos yeah, cosas well, que nos pasan a las mujeres, pero también cosas que nos pasan a todo el mundo, women, a todos los seres humanos, desde un lugar 
qué es la sensibilidad de la mujer, que eso es el con cabeza de mujer, con cuerpo de mujer, filmo desde la mujer que soy. Entonces creo que esto es importante porque hay cada vez más mujeres que filman, porque también debo recordar algo. Al principio, cuando nosotras invitábamos a las directoras, nos decían, no, pero un festival de mujeres, yo prefiero un festival donde estén todas las películas. Y cada año fue cambiando eso, ¿no? Y ya empezó a darse vuelta la cosa. Nosotros anunciábamos el festival y la directora nos hablaba, hay un lugarcito para mí. Y sí, esto vuelve un poco al principio. Creo que la manera de que se pueda saber qué es lo que viven las mujeres es mostrando, es proyectando, y dándole un lugar y exhibiéndolo y tratando de que viaje. A mí me importa mucho esto de que las películas viajen, salgan de la capital, vayan a las provincias y vayan a todos los países que puedan ir. Así que creo que esto es un un detalle no menor so, para nada. This is no minor detail to focus on. Thank you very much, Ana María. María Alches, now uh, we are going to focus on some of the reflections from the audience that we can read in our chat box. As María was talking, Mercedes said, well done, María, we have to broaden things and stop reproducing exclusions through film festival and arts in general. It's not enough to think and to encourage gender equality with class, uh, with no. um, middle to high class categories. We have to federalize this. It's interesting to think how to portray the body of women in films that Diana says, multiplying the perspectives. It is key to think in uh, the training of film students towards a post-colonial and diverse cinema. That's what Tatiana says. Then Claudia says, it is interesting to deepen the narrative structures and the themes, the shooting themes. Then Nelly says, platforms, reinforce stereotypes. I, by celebrating what you share, Maria Alce, how can we visibilize or shed light on this reinforcement of stereotypes in platforms to generate actions? What are the actions we could take? How can we um, denounce these stereotypes in platforms, Maria? Can you take the floor, please? I think that a good way to, I don't know if to um, denounce this is good a word, but to propose other images, other narratives, another type of reflections in terms of the audiovisual language to reach different corners on the one hand fostering and encouraging um, production with a federal perspective and gender perspective and on the other hand reinforcing exhibition to find a way where productions that do not respond to more conventional narratives or stereotyped narratives can find its way okay, in screening uh, space that requires imagination of um, cultural managers and programmers finding out those channels either platforms or um, neighborhood uh, now we don't have the intention of having imagine different greenhouses and also the importance of audiences importance of going back to the movie theaters and sharing movies. There's something about technology that leaves us more isolated more and more, each with his or her uh, device and technology and platforms um, isolate us more and more with no possibility of enreaching one another uh, with um, by uh, 
watching a movie with a stranger perhaps and sensing what the other person is perceiving so we have to attempt new ways of screening of showing movies and of seeing and sharing and learning um how to, we can be together in these times and then um denouncing stereotypes would be something like putting hands into action here there's a representation of feminine bodies that it's violent that it does not represent us that it's harmful and i think those um signaling helps us opening our eyes for certain issues that we do not want to see anymore and that we don't want don't want to see uh, those feminine stereotypes represented anymore it is important to to find channels to denounce this thank you maria thank you for your comments thank you julia if you want to get ready, there are very inter there are some very interesting comments. As you were sharing your reflection, even theoretical background, Susana uh, quotes Nancy Fraser. Nancy Fraser. Hi. We need. Susana says, to focus not only on the symbolic arena, but also the economic field. Today, we spoke of feminist and transfeminist perspective because the gender is feminist, but it is something that is within the framework of feminism. We need to focus not only on the symbolic aspect, but uh, these other aspects as well. Instead of uh, women and criticism, they continue reproducing inequalities. Even when they include us, women, it seems that they do so because it's what they should do and not because of a genuine diverse, diversity of perspectives. We could say, Julia, perhaps that there is a question of what is PC, right, in these days. Josue Manuel says, wonderful participation, Julia. My most heartfelt congratulations. My congratulations from Portugal. Julia, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Analia. And thank you for listening to me. And thank you for your feedback and your questions. I, ha I, am, I totally agree that... Uh, it has to be cross-cutting, uh, focusing on the material aspect of production and dissemination, as Maria was saying, and the circulation of cinema, but also from the uh, performing framework. In a relationship that is always hard to separate, because everything is intertwined in that sense. That's why my participation, focusing on critique, precisely uh, wants to highlight the dichotomy or the binarism of uh, that on the one hand you have uh, the reflection or thought and the other one is the political aspect in the academia, in the educational field, as Ana Maria Muchnik pointed out. Um, recalling this moving experience which in fact takes place at federal level lately when um, we take center stage at universities schools etc there's an all there's also comments in the chat box that pointed out the importance of thinking also how to connect film and the uh, proposals of the Comprehensive Sex Education Program, ESI. So academia, education are a, a field of political intervention where our life and our, um, reflection and needs are at stake because 
from the year 2000 something when I was at university up to today, we start conquering news areas that are seminars and they are no longer um, optional, that are part of the syllabus, that are, there is a wider offer of uh, to, to study transfeminism, feminism, and however, there is a space of a lot of controversy. So it's key to focus on that too. And also the question of thinking of criti critique or review, film reviews to take their specific tension. So the way we read the story of cinema and the way we value uh, films is also at stake. Many times we say that a film is political or not. What does it mean that something is political or not? That depends on the words, our outlook, what we consider a political issue that is um, that you the focus can be on the sound, the film making process or debate around it. In that sense, I think it's key what Florencia was pointing out to think of a, a plural, plurality of gazes, what is outside the frame of the typical uh, things that are included in cinema. I'm repeating myself perhaps now, but to think filmmaking or cinema as a, um, as a place to focus on different sensitivities, different narratives, different ways of thinking, affections, the way we share an outlook. Thank you very much. It seems you don't have a good connection. Are you still there? If not, I can keep on sharing some interesting comments that we see in terms of ESI, initial sex ed. Cynthia says as transversal content, it is worth mentioning that it is very important to include gender perspective, including diversity and human rights in universities. Since some universities are independent, some of them have gender perspective as a mandatory subject and others not. And it's very hard to include it in all the subjects. Here we see Gender inequality is a political problem. In, well, we cannot read the message. We are in the streets and we also belong in movie theaters and in screens. Congratulations to all of our colleagues. Now let's go to Florencia. Flor, please get ready. And during your presentation, there were several comments. Melissa says, Flor, you represent thousands of people of color. I celebrate your voice, your gaze, and your work. I celebrate this feminism that allows us to see each other and create collectives to prepare answers from equality. Be strong. Ana Maria says, your presentation was so strong, not only in terms of visualization in the cinema, but also in terms of the Argentine education system. Your voice is crucial. Nelly says, decolonizing culture and especially decolonizing each one of ourselves. Claudia says, our thoughts, perspectives and training are colonized. Everything outside from the European androcentric perspectives requires a bigger challenge. Several congratulations messages, hugs for you too. And Victoria says, hi, Flor, excellent reflection. What films or shorts can you recommend to rethink 
cinema of color or what can you say for people with indigenous features? Victoria says, I am sorry if one of the concepts was not well mentioned or explained. Thank you, Flor, you have the floor. I uh, usually ask to give references, but with other women of color, we actually debate about this. Where are those references? How, han, how can we build them? I mentioned the short by Nisha. And the truth is that, that I don't have this list because I usually observe them with time. And I read that someone wrote something like that this decolonization should go hand in hand with gender perspective. And I think that's the case, yes. It is super important for intersectionality to arrive here with the group from our university, the feminist network in our cinema university, there are many debates about programs and the different people that we study and they highlight the need to have women in curricula for the different subjects in university. And I also propose this type of perspective being incorporated. Not for this to be a, to end up being a course of Indian community or to give place to cultural appropriation. And actually, there are many things that I learned when I was older about my own culture. But this emphasis on gender perspective must go hand in hand with an anti-colonial gaze. In many cases, several... In many cases, many European authors are being quoted. But the thing is that there are thousands of and millions of people of color and they have their own cosmovision and their own way to live every day. Actors of color, for example, I was... Una cholita boliviana. I was walking down the National Park Los Alerces and someone said, you walk like a Bolivian Cholita. And I was like, wow. And actually when acting, actors of color, female actors of color have a different body language. So the voice, the way we move, there are several things to be considered and actually we have a large group with other colleagues of color, and we believe that all this should not be just the housekeeper being portrayed or performed by an actor of color. I am not saying that everything must be anti-racist, but the best example would be in my case, for example, I like women, and we always have this cliche where the toughest thing is to come out of the closet and I don't wake up every day saying oh what a shame another day as a lesbian no I have other problems the electricity bill going up and I think that the best example is to be and not to show what the problem is of being a lesbian of course it's very hard to come out for many of us, for most of us, but in my opinion, the best thing is to show what we do through examples. I will have a story as a woman, as a lesbian, and then that's how I will show and portray our story. Because repeating this issue of coming out as if our life was only reduced to that when there are so many other situations that we have to go through. Well, that's another type of stereotype that I do not like very much. And sometimes there are some types of films that I do not feel attracted to. Well, the same happens with large part of the LGBTQ plus cinema because I feel that they are stuck at this closet step. And I think that there's much more to tell if we stop seeing it from that. And I think that's what I wanted to say. Thank you. Well, Flor, thank you very much. And now we have some comments for Bea. Bea, please get ready. 
While you were talking, Luciana said, it's true. We must be tal para hacer política feminista. Decision making roles for feminist politics. Ana Maria says 35% of the project for women. Great. Beatriz is a clear example of the importance that we have in having women in decision making positions. Claudia says in the jury parity is not enough because there are women that are not or who are not feminists. Yeah. Feminism is not biological. It is crucial for juries to be trained in gender perspective and to guarantee non-discrimination. Nelly says, women in every decision-making position and collectives, that's key. And Claudia asks a question that I think is good for you to discuss now in terms of these reconciliation policies that you mentioned. And I think that this would be good. This is something that is actually being discussed in Argentina and is related to the redistribution of caring work. Well, Bea, you have the floor. Well, this forum is super interesting. I'm sorry if there is background noise. And without a doubt, it is important not to be afraid in occupying decision-making positions and not only occupying them, but also not to be afraid. And I think that you have to do it, go for it. You will make mistakes. You are going to do it wrong. And they want us to be perfect even during our revolution and to be so correct and to be so respectful. And it's not like that, not at all. That's why I was saying how we should get into action. We should get into action as crazy horses. Yes. That's the way, and that's the way others did, others did it. And that's how the, way, the world works. Why shouldn't we? And I, it was tough for me, you know? It took me years. And I remember that when I was in university, I was talking to my friends how we all wanted to direct films and the men were directing and we were producing their shorts. We would cook or, or be there for them and not doing what we wanted to do. So in this regard, it's true, right? It's not enough to have parity in decision-making positions. And there we have committees and there is a need of a perspective. And even though many don't have it, at least one should have it and should put it on the table. So first, we women should be there because that process is not so easy. And this process is not a process of learning. And it's more of a process of unlearning. We are unlearning many things. We are deconstructing ourselves. So we should be there no matter what. Um, there are things that I still see in feminists actually, and I won't name, I won't give names, but uh, there was an award that was going to be given to women, to female directors. And they were saying, no, she's young. And it was a 60 year old woman. And I was like, yeah, she is young, but there were men who received the same award with 40 and 50 years. So we are even demanding with ourselves among women. And this is very interesting. In Sweden, for example, the Institute is led by a feminist woman and she is very good because she always gives so many examples and she always tells how from men, they expect potential and from women, they expect experience. So I think that we should also analyze how much we are asking from ourselves. And in my case, I'm trying not to be so demanding and to ask so much from women to have that, that path. So I think it's important for us to be there. And if there are going to be five women, at least one of them should 
contribute with that perspective, with that vision. And this is what we do in our committees. We have 14 people, we have parity, and if there is no parity, then there should be more women than men. And at least one of them will have that perspective and will share it with the rest, and she will be working from that perspective. I don't know what other comments there were, but what I believe, uh, as I said, is that it is crucial not to be afraid. Life is too short. Life is too short. And in this regard, we should be together. And as I said before, I believe that references are important. And in feminism, we have more and more things with the lack of, of options that we have right now. Feminism is a good one to make inequalities visible and a good tool for us to fight. So there is a responsibility. And as I said, with no fear whatsoever, because this is the way in which we're going to make more things visible. And also there was a comment about the importance of having a statistical observatory, having data. Yes, data are crucial because they reveal many unexpected things. In many cases, we are so focused in some areas and then maybe there was another area that we needed to work more. So we need to carry out studies and in our experience, for example, Sometimes it's better to go through baby steps and not being too ambitious. So instead of doing things hugely, we should do it step by step. And also digital tools are very important. For example, in order to obtain data, right? It's not only carrying out studies because it's very hard to carry out studies that way without the necessary technology. And sometimes since information is not systematized, it's very hard to extract that information. So maybe it's good to start with tools or instruments so that film budgets could be dynamic. And then we can see how many people have been hired, how old they are, what are their wages, and being able from associations or administrations to use daily tools with systems that could allow us to analyze data in a feasible way. And in this regard, for those who have an initiative like festivals, etc., to be able to share the tools for all of us to have the same tools so that we can make comparisons and analyze the impact of the measures made in the short, medium, and long run. So if there are female or films made by female directors to realize the impact of that, but maybe throughout time or after some time, the impact is different. Sometimes we only concentrate on recent memory, but it's good to see what happens with things throughout time. So it's good for us to have tools in order to analyze the data and the impact of all the initiatives that we all have. So we have a lot to do. Well, thank you very much, Bea. There are some more comments. There's a comment in English too. And there are many contributions around the topic that I believe is very important. We have to keep on fighting for the implementation of comprehensive sex education as established by law, but it is very hard to implement it because there's a section of the law that says that each institution can adapt it to its own curricula. So that's how we don't have a good comprehensive sex education foundation that would include this perspective in universities. Then Luciana made a comment and explained how there is a network called RUGE, which is a gender university network, which is a part of the University National Council, and there they are working a lot. And actually, I am one of the members of that network, and we are working a lot around 
superior or higher education and how to include all those issues related to gender perspective and gender perspective focused or from a feminist perspective based on human rights. Now from universities, now we have a law called Ley Micaela, where people working in state institutions are being trained with gender perspective. But I wanted to mention, as it was discussed in the chat, how important it is for us to have in university education. And well, of course, starting with initial education, it's great. But if we can have in universities people being trained with a gender perspective since many of them will have decision making positions how good it would be to have all that training happening first instead of then doing this training like the Micaela law when they are already working in the state but we believe that there are several contributions which are very good. And there is a comment from Espacio Inca in Villa Maria, which says Espacio Inca are federal movie theaters. We are present in every province, securing a, an exhibition with a gender perspective of diversities in our territory. Moreover, in movie theaters, we are fighting to have more women in movie theater management because in most of the theaters those who make decisions in terms of programming and of course in technical positions they are all men there's a lot to do in argentina we can do it together my friends well these are some of the comments that we are receiving through the chat I believe that this is a very rich exchange and I think that we are going to leave this forum with incredible ideas. We are restless, we are uncomfortable and this is very good because reality makes us feel like that, like that and we can see everything that was already achieved and how much we have to do in terms of our rights to keep on conquering rights for us. With this, we are going to be closing this forum and we would like to do this by celebrating this great news of the legal, safe and free abortion bill that was already presented in Congress. So now, please, if you can, get your green scarves and activate your cameras. If you don't have it on, and you can open your mics if we if you would like to say anything or to sing or whatever you'd like to chant we are up for that and let's stay with our green scarves so that they can take the pictures <laughs> No tengo el pañuelo, pero apoyo totalmente. Así que sí, será ley. I support you completely, so it will be a law. The law will be passed. Vamos, vamos. Hay que volver a las calles. Bueno, sí, las calles. calles. Podemos hacer un ensayo de calles. La marcha sí. digital. La marcha digital, vamos. This is like a digital protest. Vamos cambiando de lugar. Muy bueno. Aquí está, la marea verde. Presente. Captura de pantalla con The green tide is present. Open up your screens, turn on your video. Hay que poner en galería. Claro. Modo galería. 
Galería Verde. Galería, espera. Escenario es un horror. Galería. Manden las capturas de pantalla porque. No tengo el pañuelo y no puedo hacer la captura. Ah, ah, me lo voy a poner y me... Ahí hay una compañera que la tiene en tipo barbijo, sería como la. Ah. There is one person who's sí. using the scarf as a face mask. Le tenemos que... de las provincias argentinas, el cine federal con perspectiva de género. Compañera, vamos. Le tenemos que empezar a ver. Sí, 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 sí. Compañeras, queremos educación sexual integral anticonceptivos para no abortar. We want sex education, birth control to avoid pregnancies and legal abortion to avoid death. Gracias. Thank you very much to everyone. Thank you very much to the entire team who organized this. Thank you to the participants, to everyone who joined this forum today. Thank you very much to everyone. Thank you. El año próximo, la próxima. See you next year. We will see each other in the streets. We'll see each other in the streets wherever we can. El año que viene volvemos al mar. And next year, we will go back to Mar del Plata. Maybe we will celebrate that it will be passed as a law.